a lot of focus on Amcon right now. It's what's uh, triggered some of the activity we're seeing on that market since its announcement. Uh, in terms of what this is actually going to spell for the banking sector, how are you viewing uh, the kind of activity we're, play we're seeing right now? Um, morning, Alicia, and thank you for having me. In terms of the announcements that we saw yesterday from Amcon, we saw an immediate um, reaction of the market, especially the banking stock. There was a lot of heavy bid um, for lots of the banking stocks, and a couple of banking stocks gained full 5% yesterday, riding on the back of that announcement from Amcom yesterday that they were going to buy up uh, 2.2 trillion naira worth of um, MPLs. Uh, we believe that's good for the market, and that's good for the banking subsector in particular. And the reaction that we saw of the market yesterday was not unexpected because um, now Amcon has given specific dates and timeline for the acquisition of these um, toxic assets. Taking a look at uh, what it's prompted, I mean, the market is now above that key psychological level of 25,000 points. Where to from here on out in your books? Well, we've always um, believed that um, the market will probably end around the 25,000 if we have a good year. We do not see the market um, having a significant upside from where we are. But based on what Amcon is doing, we do not expect the market also to go south um, um, a lot from where we are right now because uh, a lot of stability will come into the market. Uh, there will be some form of confidence restored in the market knowing that as Amcon begins to buy up the toxic loans, especially those that are backed up um, by shares of listed companies, they don't have intention of, of depressing the market by trying to recover their investments in the short term. So we do not expect the market to um, go south um, in as much as we do not expect the market um, to end at about 30,000 this year as some people had envisaged. What we expect players in the market to do is to trade actively. And for anyone that trades actively, it could end up in the, in the blue for, for, for such a trader. Let's hone in on some of these banking players now. I mean, Access Bank really in the spotlight yesterday, up 5%. Investment merit as you see it in Access Bank right now. Of course, this has been one of the stronger players and has been cited uh, to possibly be involved in some M&A activity. Yeah, Access Bank, um, we've been hearing for a while that they're interested in acquiring some of the um, eight, one of the eight rescued banks. And um, that activity has been going on. We do not have um, firm confirmations yet as per the, um, what the bids are and um, if they are the preferred bidder in terms of the banks that we hear that they are interested in. But I believe that Access Bank has enjoyed also the ride from the announcement from Amcon, um, like other banks have done. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was not only Access Bank, even Oceanic Bank benefited yesterday, gaining almost a full 5% um, from that announcement. And we see Access Bank, if they are able to um, achieve their drive of acquiring one of the legacy banks uh, um, that was recently rescued, um, it will spell good for the group going forward mm -hmm. in terms of the synergies, in terms of the um, expansion that they would achieve by taking over the bank that we hear that they are interested in. Exactly. And I mean, there were a lot of those on that list yesterday in terms of the gainers. First City Monument Bank, Sky Bank and First Bank all gaining close enough to that daily upward limit as well. In the meantime, we've had some interesting activity on Dangoti Cement, accounting for around a quarter of the market's capitalization. To a large extent, quite a strong direction will be provided from that counter as well, right? Yes, um, it's important to watch that space of Dangoti Cement because... Now it's not about um, a division or a sector of the market accounting for 25% of the market. This is just about one stock accounting for 25% of the market. So significantly what that means is that any upward or downward swing in that particular stock could move the market. If you look at it critically, you will see that the all share index has gained about 21% um, year to date. But the market capitalization is up uh, over 60% just because of the influence of um, Dangote Cement. So it's, it's, we do not see an upside from 134 Naira that it closed yesterday, not a significant upside, but it's, it will be interesting to watch and see how Dangote Cement performs because with the performance of Dangote Cement, you might as well see a direction for um, the market capitalization and the all share index. Mm -hmm. Well, it's that entire uh, Dangoti uh, you know, company that performed yesterday. All the subsidiaries doing pretty well. Dangoti Sugar uh, up amongst the lot. Uh, and obviously, a lot of impetus, one would assume, coming through from the increase we've seen in sugar prices, raw sugar prices globally sitting at 30-year highs. Your view on a player like Dangoti Sugar? 
Well, Dango to Sugar, uh, for that particular stock, yes, we see an upside because um, you must realize that the company has recently announced that they are creating their increasing capacity, their production capacity, and Dango to Sugar is not just a strong player in Nigeria, but a strong player in um, West Africa as a whole. And with what is happening um, in, in Europe and in Asia, that has led to the increase in price of sugar. We expect that Dango to Sugar would benefit from this. And so for that particular stock, yes, we see an upside. Um, like you rightly said, yesterday was um, a good day for the Dangote group. Dangote cement gaining, Dangote flour gaining, Dangote sugar gaining. It was a good outing for the Dangote brand yesterday. Let's, let's look at Dangote flour though, because you know it's not the same kind of uh, fundamental basis uh, that Dangote sugar enjoys with the increase in sugar prices that a player like Dangote flour would enjoy with wheat prices on the rise globally as well given some of the drought situation we're seeing uh, play out in Russia specifically this is going to mean an increase in its input costs from here on out so how do you play a counter like that? Well for Dangote flour and for many uh, companies in Nigeria who have had such issues to deal with in terms of prices um, of the commodities that they deal with increasing abroad what they typically do is to pass on the increase in that price to the end users and so it leaves them also uh, at least stable. Um, for Dangote flour we do not see um, a significant drop in, uh, in terms of the numbers coming out of the company. Don't forget that recently they've just diversified into other uh, into the noodles business and other things that they had announced that they were going to be doing as a company and so the increase in the, in, in the price of wheat um, abroad we see it as yes a risk for the company but ultimately what they would, they would most likely do is pass on that increased cost to the end users uh, and so for the company the differential in terms of earnings might not be much.